Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the, the June 11th Board of Selectmen meeting. Sorry, Select Board. I still am not used to saying that. Select Board meeting. This meeting will be broadcast live and recorded by Foxborough Cable Access. Uh, today we're meeting to have interviews for New Town Council. So, do we, should we, do we do the pledge and everything for every meeting? Should I do May the as pledge? Well. Yeah, okay. Might as well do the pledge. Mark, will you lead us in the pledge? Sorry. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and, and justice, justice for all. Just deficits, there is such a bunch of first. You should at least mention citizens' input. Is oh, there anyone here? Exactly. Is there anyone here for citizens' input? <laughs> Katie, anybody online for citizens' input? Okay. We'll make sure we cover all the bases, right? right? Exactly. All right. Exactly. Okay. So we're starting with Harrington Heap today. So we have some gentlemen in front of us representing that we're going to be interviewing with. Can you introduce yourselves to everybody? Sure. sure. Um, good afternoon. My name is Chris Brown. I'm Tom Harrington. And Chris Eep. All right. Maybe uh, interview, uh, mention who we are. Oh, exactly. Since they don't really know us. Yeah, exactly. I'll just say. I'm, I'm, I'm just making, making sure. <laughs> Chris? No, Chris Heap. Tom, Tom. Tom Harrington. All right. And one more time? Chris Brown. Chris. I knew there was a second Chris there. Okay. Awesome. I'm just making sure so I can make sure I address you by your name. <laughs> okay. So, obviously, you're here in front of the Foxborough Select Board. Um, my name is Stephanie McGowan. I'm the chair. Bill Eubner, vice chair. We met before. Yep. Mark Elfman, you haven't met me yet. But nice to meet nice you. To meet you. Board. Debbie Giardino, clerk. Nice to meet you. And then we have, we have Katie's our right, right hand man over here. Katie's so. been helping us out, getting us everywhere ready to go. So. And our fourth member is Dennis. But he's, yes. he's watching, but oh, he's not. Uh, I forgot to ask. I knew yeah. Dennis was not going to yeah. be here. Dennis is definitely, definitely on live. Dennis, can we hear you? Can you hear us? He might not be Zooming, but he is watching. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, perfect. Okay. All right. Okay, so um, of course we've. Um, come up with a uh, list of questions that we're gonna um, ask every, everybody who comes before us. So, and um, everybody knows we've cut, uh, during our uh, prep meeting, we assigned everybody, everybody a question. So what we'll do is, um, a as some of, um, some of the questions we know you might answer into a bullet point we had behind it. Again, so we may skip skip a question as we go along based on if it's already been answered. No use to ask ask it a second time. So okay, so I will I'll start. So our first topic is legal expertise, and our question to you is: Please give us some background on your firm and why you believe you would be a good legal partner for the town of Foxborough. All right, so I'll start and just. You know, to give you kind of a general introduction as well. Um, I thank you for the opportunity for us to meet with you here today. Um, as I said, my name is Chris Brown, and I am the uh, proposed lead on our proposal uh, to the town of Foxborough. Um, I have been a partner with our firm now for several years, and before that, I was a partner at a firm in Framingham that also did municipal law. Uh, I have been practicing for about 19 years as an attorney, uh, 14 of that in municipal law. Um, and uh, like all the other attorneys at my firm, I have extensive in experience in what you might describe as generalist municipal work, um, which would be you know, advising officials about OB meeting law, public records, ethics, um, drafting and interpreting charters, bylaws, and ordinances, uh, policies, that type of stuff, uh, preparing for and attending town meetings, many of them. Um, we're just through our season, so uh, it's, been a, it's been a busy few months. Um, and also just, you know, obviously helping to answer the questions that come up every day in, in, in the cities and towns that we represent, um, which I can tell you, doing this for the, well, as long as I have, that there's no two days are the same. <laughs> uh, there's always new things coming up. Um, but uh, also, like the other attorneys at my firm, we all have kind of niche uh, areas of expertise within municipal law um, that complement each other. Um, my particular experience is in uh, all aspects of labor and employment law. Um, that's everything from arbitration to uh, collective bargaining to everyday advice, uh, as well as various types of litigation and, and everything in between. Um, I'm also very well versed in contracts and procurement. Um, 
like your procurement officials. I've, I've attended the inspector general courses. I've received all the same training they have, you know, but I have the additional uh, legal training as well, um, which has made it possible for me to you know, draft and negotiate a wide variety of contracts. Um, I've advised on complex and unique procurement issues in a variety of, of different uh, areas. Uh, and also assisting towns with issues and challenges to their procurement procedures, whether, whether it's a protest on an individual um, procurement or trying to help them figure out um, an efficient and effective way to, to get something that they need, whether it's a project done or, or, or something, or good or something like that. Um, and I also, uh, before I did municipal law, I was a uh, insurance defense attorney, so I did litigation for five years. Um, and owing to that, uh, I picked up a lot of uh, experience in construction litigation, which I've carried over into my public practice, uh, where I now um, have a lot of experience advising public owners on complex, uh, large construction projects, whether it's in the planning stage before, uh, helping with the procurement process, whether it's during the, a project, um, if there's issues with the contractor or uh, things of that nature, and after the project is done, where there, maybe there's issues that manifest with your building, um, or your um, public works project, and you know things have to be followed up with with the, with the contractor or the designer. So um, that's what I bring to the table. Um, and uh, I'll hand it over to Chris to talk about his experience. Thank you. Um, so I'm Chris Heap again. Um, I joined the firm in 2005 um, after spending uh, a year clerking for a judge on the Massachusetts Land Court. Um, so I've been with the firm since since then, since 2005, um, and have been practicing um, entirely municipal law uh, ever since that time. Um, I am currently serving as town council in Needham, um, where we took over as lead town council in 2020, uh, after several years there uh, working on various projects in town on a special council basis. Um, but we've been uh, lead council there since 2020. Uh, so in that capacity, I'm, I'm, I'm primarily responsible for all of the legal work um, that comes in through Needham, um, town meeting, general town government, open meeting law, sort of all of the stuff that you would regularly expect uh, a town to, uh, all the legal work you'd expect a town uh, of that size to be generating. Um, so that's a substantial uh, portion of my practice currently. Uh, and in addition to that, I also serve as the uh, leader of our firm's uh, land use practice group. So I'm uh, in the other towns where I'm not the lead town council, uh, I also have responsibility for making sure we're taking care of all of the land use, zoning, subdivision, building department uh, work that comes in. So for all of those other towns, I'm in close contact with the planning directors, ZBA planning board chairs, uh, building commissioners, uh, helping them work through all of the um, interesting or controversial applications that are coming in um, through the sort of daytime government processing of the application, reviewing uh, enforcement requests, helping the boards through hearings locally, um, and if it comes to it, uh, helping defend any litigation that comes out of the sort of local permitting practice in our various towns. Uh, in addition to me, that practice group in our firm has several other dedicated land use attorneys who are doing um, basically full-time land use work for our various towns. Uh, that includes uh, two other former land court law clerks uh, who spent time working for the judges uh, over there. Um, so we've got, um, in addition to a you know general uh, broad array of expertise on the general municipal side, we also have uh, several attorneys working full time on the land use uh, work that is being generated by our various towns. Tom, sure. <clears throat> Again, I'm Tom Harrington. Um, so I've been at the firm since 1990. Uh, and I serve as lead counsel in Wellesley, Littleton, Carlisle, Norfolk, and Templeton. Um, you had asked what makes us a, why we think uh, we're a good fit for this town. Um, and, and I think um, it's, it's one of our strengths is uh, we're not too big and we're not too small. So we're big enough in that we have um, expertise in just about every issue you're going to face. You know, we have wetlands experts, we have labor experts, we have zoning experts. Um, we've done lots of town meetings, so we're well versed in the process of um, uh, of running a town meeting and getting you ready for a town meeting. Um, so we're not too big, but we're not too small either. Um, and so you're. 
frankly, Foxborough would be a really important client to us. We'd be pleased to have you. We'd be honored to serve as your town council. Um, and <clears throat> you would have an important status in our firm. We're, we're choosy about the towns we pick. Um, we essentially only do town council work, but we're at 15 towns right now. We have 12 attorneys. We like that ratio. We think we have room to add a few more towns, but we're, we don't apply to every um, town council job that comes out there. I think what makes Foxborough a good fit for us is um, you're a well-run town. Uh, you know, we have clients in the area. Everyone talks to everyone. Um, uh, we know you to be a well-run town. Um, I think we fit well with that. I think we have a skill set that would enhance the town and that the town can use. We're not, we, we don't like to be just kind of answers at the end of the computer, right? So if you're looking to email out a question and get an email answer back, there's lots of firms that do that. That's lots of firms that do that well. We do that well, but we wanna take the next step with you. We wanna um, kind of bring our expertise to bear and help you move in the direction that you, that you would like to move in. And I think you'll see in our proposal, um, you know, we. The way we work is we have a town expert, which will be Chris Brown. So he's going to be the Foxborough expert. So he's going to understand what's going in all aspects of Foxborough so that if we get a question from this side of things, we understand from that side of things how things are, you know, the, the subtlety to the question um, and how we might be able to help strategize a better answer for you. So in, in short, I think that's, that's what we bring to the table. I think um, Foxborough, uh, again, would be a great town for us, and I think we could serve you well. Thank you. I think you may have kind of touched on this, but uh, maybe a little bit more. Um, please describe uh, your approach to managing municipal law issues for your clients. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I, I think what sets our firm apart uh, is... Um, you know, our philosophy of client management. Um, my background in particular, I grew up um, in Northern Vermont uh, and uh, my parents were business owners. So as a kid, um, thanks to the child labor laws, I, I had a job on Saturdays and school vacations and, and summer breaks and stuff. Um, but I think what that instilled in me was a real customer service philosophy to everything that I've done in my, in my adult career. Um, and I bring that to, to an, my practice as an attorney as well. I think the vital part of your relationship with your town council is just that you can trust them. Um, you know, you're not always going to like what we have to tell you, um, but you should be able to trust what I, that what I tell you or what Tom or Chris or any of our other attorneys give you for advice has been you know, properly vetted, properly researched, and is correct. Um, the other thing is in trusting someone is that when you pick up the phone, they're going to be there. You know, I mean, Every town that I'm in, and, I, and I'm in Blackstone as lead town council, uh, I am also in Grafton as lead town council. Those, the town manager, the town administrator, the chair of the select board, they have my cell phone number, okay? I, I realize that municipal law is a 24 hour a day business, right? And, and questions can come up uh, at one of your meetings, you know, um, in the middle of the night when you have a water main break and you're trying to figure out, you know, I have a procurement question, although you could wait till 7 a.m., but that's okay, <laughs> right? Um, but, uh, you know, so I, I, I just, I'm available. I think that's, that's, the, that's the thing that I think sets me apart, um, you know, and I'm gonna respond. You know, we have a policy in the, in the proposal that it's, you know, within 24 hours, we'll respond to any email. You know, even if it's to, just to tell you, you know, this is kind of a heavy question, like we're gonna need a little time to look into it, um, but I'm getting back to you, I'm touching, with the client to say, look, like we've, we've acknowledged your email, we got it, so you're not wondering, well, when are they gonna get back to us? You know, that's not the way that we operate. Um, the other thing I would say is that, um, you know, I know that you, your, your town council that you've had now, uh, Mr. Costello, you know, great attorney, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, I did take over for him in Blackstone, where he retired a little bit earlier than here, um, he retired three years ago there. I've taken over for him there. And I think, you know, the best uh, asset I have to sell, sell you on why we're a great fit for you is my clients. Like, talk to them. They will tell you that, you know, many of them have dealt with multiple uh, town councils in their career. I am 
by far, I think, you know, my own unobjective opinion, one of the more, more responsive ones. So um, I would love to bring uh, my customer service aspect of practicing municipal law to help you. Um, again, you've kind of touched on this, but maybe just to give it a little bit more um, color. In addition to municipal law, what areas does your firm excel in? Um, and obviously, what is your strengths in labor and potentially MCAD uh, related issues? Yeah, well, I, I think that the, um, you know, the, uh, and, I, and I will, I will give Tom and Chris some chances to talk, <laughs> I promise. Um, you know, we, the, the strength about our firm um, is that there's, when you say municipal law, I mean, you're really talking about a lot of different things, you know, and I think you all probably realize it as elected officials, like you've, you've seen these things, right? Um, but we really have the gamut from, you know, appellate work to a, appellate tax board work, you know, to zoning, I mean, A to Z, right? We, there is nothing in the municipal law field that someone at our firm does not have expertise in. You know, so there's very few th times I can imagine where a town has said, you know, we want special counsel on something. Like, we have the ability to handle all of these things in-house. You know, and that was, you know, I think that was a major attraction um, at least for Chris and Tom to bring me into the firm a couple years ago because, you know, of my labor and employment background, but also my public construction background, too. I mean, we, we do have a, another great attorney, Jenny Merrill, who does a lot of procurement and, and work in that area. And Jenny and I kind of, we operate, you know, partly as a team and partly we, we split amongst our clients in terms of uh, offering that expertise. But we have, you know, we have dedicated members of, of the firm that are, able to address any area and I think that's uh, that's a, a really good strength for us <clears throat> uh, what is your experience uh, with issues involving uh, police and fire and more specifically dealing with uh, license to carry appeals uh, suitability and alcohol okay so let me start I'll go backwards start with <laughs> alcohol licensing um, we actually have an attorney at our firm uh, Ivria Freed uh, who is uh, just elected the, the president of the MMLA for the next year. Then that's the Municipal Bar Association, which I'm on the executive board of, by the way. Um, and she does a lot of our licensing work. Uh, she's, you know, I would say statewide recognized in terms of an expert in terms of marijuana and ca cannabis as well. Um, but alcohol licensing, you know, and, and uh, I think we all went through the COVID uh, pandemic and all the changing rules about, uh, you know, outdoor licensing and taking drinks with you and things like that. So she's well versed in that um, and has been able to, you know, help all of our clients. Um, on the um, license to carry issues, both uh, Donna Brewer, a partner of mine, uh, as well as, my, as myself, we've handled multiple license uh, to carry appeals. Um, mostly they're, they're usually in the district court, but I have had some in the superior court as well. Um, you know, and I think we are seeing with uh, the change in um, jurisprudence around the Second Amendment, you know, that there are, there are some legal challenges coming, I think, to the, the license to carry uh, uh, statutory scheme in Massachusetts, you know, and, and it's, it's mostly just waiting for the right case. But, um, you know, so that is something that we are aware of and are, are having to deal with. Uh, Donna and I both had appeals within the past six months where we've had those types of constitutional issues that were raised in that. Um, police and fire. Uh, before I came to Harrington Heap, uh, at my other firm, I did collective bargaining with the police and fire unions in Framingham uh, for 12 years. Um, they have a superior and a patrol officers union in both, uh, both, um, both the fire and police departments. Um, we were able to negotiate to get the police department out of civil service. So, um, you know, I have experience with you know, all of the, the special legislation and things that are involved in, in pursuing that. Um, I've gone to the Joint Labor Management Committee, which is the state agency where if you can't negotiate a, a contract with your police or fire union, um, you basically go to interest arbitration. And, and I've done that uh, probably four or five times um, that I can remember. Um, and in addition, just generally in labor, I've done many uh, arbitrations, whether they're grievance arbitrations, whether they're about Interpreta interpretation of a contract. Um, I've done civil service uh, appeals uh, for, for bypasses for promotions, appointments, for disciplinary appeals. Um, you know, I, I do have all of that experience as well. Thank you. Do you guys want to say anything else about licensing or? You, you no? covered it. Okay, yeah. all right. <laughs> 
When dealing with complex zoning <clears throat> issues, what is your approach? Chris. Um, number one, be familiar with the zoning bylaw in town. I mean, as you know, an incoming town council, the first thing we'd want to do is, is, is um, make sure we knew the zoning bylaw uh, inside and out, um, meet and develop relationships with the, with the planner, uh, the building commissioner, uh, who's going to be the zoning enforcement officer, you know, on the front lines of applying the zoning bylaw to anything interesting um, or that may merit enforcement. Um, get to know the board chairs, ZBA planning board, um, and you know, generally always be available to come out to those meetings, you know, as needed to help. Um, you know, some boards um, are fully independent, uh, depending upon the town. Some boards prefer to have town council in the room if there's going to be an interesting, complicated, or controversial uh, application being presented. Um, so generally, just you know, know the bylaw. Um, we very well know the zoning in terms of the state law, the case law, you know, how we think things are going to be decided if they go to an appeal uh, to land court or to superior court. Um, so we always have a good sense of that. But, you know, in general, just um, make sure we are available to and working with all of the relevant uh, actors in town, um, both in terms of the professional staff and the volunteer board members who are serving at night um, to help them with 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 the project you know it also helps to know um you know if there's a desired result you know sometimes um you know you, you have to be mindful of of um whether an application is supported in town or or generating controversy or uh, may have some opposition um but so there's a lot to navigate there both in terms of um you know the the ultimate decision that's going to get rendered um, making sure that the public hearing is run properly to give to allow for applicant abutters um, interested parties to participate uh, and be heard by the board and then ultimately um, help produce a decision that is going to however the board wants to wants the building commissioner or the board or whoever's in charge of making the decision um, you need to produce a decision that's going to stand up to some scrutiny if the applicant or opponents or another party in interest wants to um, appeal it. So it's, it's uh, making sure you get the, the, the law right locally and at the state level, um, making sure the decision, whatever it is, is defensible, um, and then being available to defend it um, if there is a challenge after the fact. Thank you. I, I'll add a little bit to that. Um, so I, I hope what you'll hear from us when you come to us with a question, particularly on something like that, you'll ask your question and it's our job to answer it. It's also our job to ask you, what do you want to do? Because you, sometimes, the answer, sometimes the answer isn't necessarily related to what you want to do. So it's important to have a discussion, understand the question and understand which way the client would like things to go. And I'll, I'll even drill down on that a little bit more. So in our towns, we actually see it as two clients that, we're, that we, we work for both clients and we work to make sure that everyone's in unison. And, and the, the differentiation is daytime government and nighttime government. So you know, we serve both clients. We serve the, the people that are here all day, every day. They have the questions of, you know, we gotta, you know, we gotta make the trains run and we gotta make them run on time. Nighttime government, right, it's very much policy, uh, and procedure process and, and you know, heavy open meeting law, public records, what can we talk about, what can we not talk about, how do we move things in those directions. And so we want to make sure that we're in touch with both bodies and that we're making sure that both bodies, as much as we can, are working together towards the common goal. Because it's nighttime government to set that policy and it's daytime government's job to push that policy forward. And so we see ourselves as kind of a conduit to all, to both sides of things to make sure things are working the way you want them to work. Thank you. Okay, our next topic is understanding of town issues and needs. So the question would be, what do you consider to be some of the biggest issues facing municipalities in general? Well, I, mean, I, I think that the, um, you know, one of the over overwhelming things that face all municipalities, at least in eastern Massachusetts, is housing. You know, I mean, it's a major issue. Um, you know, we've seen 
uh, through the town meeting season, how various communities have responded on the MBTA zoning um, requirements, for example. Um, you know, so that's certainly a major issue that we've been dealing with with all, with all of our clients uh, because, you know, we've all been working on, like you, like the having to try to come up with a zoning bylaw that the community will accept, right? Um, and it's a difficult process, you know, and it's not like that that's the only uh, thing that's gonna solve everything either. Um, you know, the other thing in the housing realm we've dealt with is, you know, the migrant uh, housing crisis too. Um, you know, we have several communities that have been impacted by um, where the state is, is, is putting people. So, um, you know, we've, we've had to be dealing with that as well. So, um, I don't know, what, what else would you guys would say for uh, issues that you see? So I would add, um, one of the issues that I deal with more and more is um, interactions. Um, you, you know, boards that are having difficulty getting along, citizens that are um, exercising their First Amendment rights to the extreme before boards. Um, I, I'm honestly, having done this for as long as I've done this, I'm worried because I think your job and the elected and appointed official jobs has become much more difficult and much more contentious than it was 20 years ago. And I'm concerned that we, you know, you don't see very many contested races anymore. You don't see very many, you, you know, like it, it used to be, oh, we've got an opening on the ZBA and we've got 10 people to choose from. And it's not like that. I, I mean, you, within reason, but it's not like that. It's not, it's not the way it was 10 years ago where, or 15 years ago where you just had a lot more volunteerism. And, and I'm worried about that and I, and I don't have the solution, but I do know we need to be constantly thinking about how we draw more people in to helping us run all our towns, you know, how we keep this process going, how we protect um, and nurture to an extent our new board members so that they can succeed and, uh, you know, and feel like they're accomplishing something and not just sitting there, you know, kind of taking um, pot shots half the time. So that, so again, I don't have an answer, but I see it way too much and it, it, it worries me. Madam Chair, may I have a quick follow-up? Absolutely. Oh. <clears throat> any of the uh, 15 communities you guys represent uh, have any migrant housing? Uh, yes. A uh, uh, push, forced, uh, yeah, I mean, added we, to that community? We're, uh, we're town council in Bourne, and we were dealing with issues last summer. I mean, when the, <clears throat> when the shelters were maybe, what, double capacity? Uh, um, and then we've recently had... Uh, in Norfolk, right? Right, we're, we're town council. They're going to be Norfolk. using. We're, they're using an old state facility there, I think. Okay. So yeah, we're dealing with it. Okay, thank you. And you know, Foxborough is a community, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> okay. Uh, next question. If not brought up in previous answer, how do you see the MBTA Communities Act impacting Foxborough? Chris. You want to take that? So we just touched on it briefly, but what, yeah. you, you know, how, how do you see the actual impact? Well, I mean, so I know we we know that the the proposed zoning was voted down uh, fairly recently. Um, so I think, you know, it is I think an open question. You know, the attorney general has has initiated litigation against against another town that um, that voted down litigation, Milton. Um, so I think it's an open question what additional enforcement steps uh, may be soon to follow um, at the state level for those towns that have not adopted um, MBTA compliance zoning. So I think for question number one is is you know what what is what happens next? Is an, there another shoe that's going to drop in terms of how the, the litigation um, happens? Now I know that the litigation is on a briefing schedule. The existing litigation is on a briefing schedule that makes it unlikely that there's going to be any definitive rulings that, you know, are going to be of benefit to other towns um, before we sort of turn the, turn the calendar over to over to next year. Um, so we don't really know how that enforcement's going to go. Um, but, um, you know, I think it'll do, it really it seems to me that it depends on the success or lack of success that the Attorney General um, gets out of that enforcement litigation, which is meant to be an example to other towns. Um, 
and until we get some additional ad additional guidance, um, you know, it's we don't know what the consequences are. I think every practitioner who does zoning work, you know, has a <clears throat> has has their own opinion about whether or not the failure to adopt MBTA compliance zoning uh, merits actual the actual enforcement that the, the attorney general is going after in that litigation, or whether that should be be dismissed. You know, I think there's. Um, you know, a, a feeling out there that the statute was drafted in a way that means that if you don't apply the, if you don't adopt compliance zoning, the consequence really should just be that you get to, you, the town has effectively decided to forego grant funding from the state, and that that's sort of should be the sum total of the consequence that the town faces for not adopting compliance zoning. Um, obviously, the attorney general takes a different view. So, really, I think to me, there seems to be an open question about what what is really at stake here for failure to, com to adopt compliance zoning. Um, but as long as that question remains unanswered by the SJC, um, you know, the town's options would be to, you know, leave the status quo as is or to attempt to take another crack at adopting um, MBTA compliance zoning between now and, you know, the first of the year. Um, but that's obviously a policy decision. Um, for everybody that, that would need to be discussed and talked about. And then you'll you'll be finding out how to how to handle it once it goes forward. So quick follow up to that. Out of the communities you represent, how many um, are, are dealing with the MBTA Act? Uh, well, I just about, maybe not quite all of them, but. Yeah, I think Blackstone's just out of the, they're not an adjacent community. And, yeah, and we so, have some Western Mass communities that obviously aren't. So say aren't eight impacted. or nine? I think, and I think our experience runs the gamut of possible reactions to the MBTA zoning. Littleton recently adopted MBTA zoning that we believe will, will satisfy their obligations under the statute. It failed once, failed once. After it failed the first time. Uh, Hopkinton recently voted down the MBTA zoning at town meeting, so they are in effectively the same position uh, that Foxborough is. Uh, Needham is taking it to a fall town meeting, so we don't know what's going to happen there, but they're, they're, they're on a calendar that will at least allow a town meeting vote to occur before the deadline. Um, and thinking through our other towns. Right. Yeah, Wells, Wellesley's an interesting situation, and it's something to watch because in, in Wellesley, uh, we submitted our bylaw to um, Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities, which, and they're going to tell you if you meet all the uh, right standards um, and formulas. And so we, we submitted that in December. They had 90 days to review. They got us a response um, on the 90th day at 5 p.m., about three days before town meeting, which was not helpful. They had um, identified eight or nine things that they thought were wrong with our bylaw. We were able to work with them. Uh, and reduce that number to, I think, one or two. So we'll have to go, we, it was approved, but we'll have to go back uh, in the fall to tune up a couple of things. But I think what was most interesting about that process was, um, and I don't mean to uh, disparage a state agency, but I don't think they had uh, a full grasp of what they were asking for. And when they asked for it, I don't think they had a full grasp of what they were looking at. Uh, and that became clear to me as we're, as, you know, seeing what they reviewed and being able to provide the answers, it's like, you, you didn't think about that? You know, you didn't that. So I, I don't mean to say that there's an opportunity, but I think there's lots more information to come, particularly as they're reviewing those approved bylaws that they haven't pre-reviewed to see what comes out of that. So um, I think we're also in a little bit of a stay tuned to see uh, what other information we get, and maybe um, we can scale back things a little bit in, in certain instances uh, at, that might make it more palatable to town meeting. Thank you. <clears throat> well, Foxborough uh, has a good uh, commercial base. The largest one, obviously, is the craft organization, as well as the Brigham and Women's uh, General Hospital. Um, does your firm have any interactions with them, and could there be any perceived conflict of interest? No. 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 <laughs> That's well, <good> okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and just, I mean, to Bill, I mean, we've all been in communities where we have large uh, commercial businesses that are maybe headquartered there. I mean, when I was in Framingham, you know, 
BJ's, Staples, TJX, there's a whole host of them that we would deal with on TIF issues. Um, you know, we're gonna leave, we're not gonna leave. You know, so it, it's, uh, it's, I think it's something that we're all comfortable with mm -hmm. in various degrees in the communities that we serve in. I mean, you're in Needham, you're, you've got all the businesses on the, the 95 corridor too, so. Yep, we've got the world headquarters for TripAdvisor, we've got Children's Hospital building a new, a new uh, satellite location in town. Um, both of which required uh, TIF agreements, uh, pilots, you know, the sort of negotiation for zoning changes that would allow the developments to occur. Uh, so we've got, as Chris said, we've got uh, experience dealing with big uh, landowners in town, big important landowners in town, um, and working through the various agreements, permits, uh, things that um, they may be looking for, um, and managing those kinds of relationships from uh, when they're first looking to come into town you know, and then on into their tenure as uh, operators within town. One of our specialties uh, has always been what we refer to as contro controversial facility siting. And that ranges from a gas fired power plant to, you know, big box stores or anything in between where we've been called in as special counsel be just so that, we, you know, we can help the town get their hands around it because we understand the permitting that that, that entity is gonna need at the state level and at the town level. And we're, we're comfortable in all aspects of that, so we, we've often been called in as a special to, to guide the town through that process, whether they want to approve it, approve it with conditions, or deny it. Thank you. Thank you. Moving into clients' communication, how do you typically manage a relationship with clients, for example, lead, lead attorney or team approach, and why? So. We did say this in our proposal, but we, you know, we, we have a team, you know, and while I will be the lead, um, Chris and I, really we work as a team because there's things I do that he doesn't do and vice versa, right? Um, so what we've really done in our other towns is we encourage the officials when they're contacting us to contact both of the attorneys. You know, although I will be the one responsible for your town and I will be the one making sure that emails get responded to and, you know, if there's questions that come up that they get answered, um, you know, we really encourage that so that we're, we're cutting out inefficiencies. And, you know, if I happen to be in court one day, uh, Chris can respond to something, you know, or, you know, if Chris is taking a day off, we do take vacations at some point, um, you know, we, we can make sure that someone gets your response. I mean, the great thing about our firm is there's, no, there's nothing that just one person does. You know, we, we have at least two people that do every t legal issue. So um, that is really, you know, how we um, approach our client management. Is it's, it's like having interchangeable pieces, you know, except you'll always see me and Chris. And I think that's an important point, too, is that we've spoken, I think, throughout the, the interview about sort of the depth of our expertise in the firm. Um, and we, we, as the leads, draw on that depth all the time, every day. Um, but what we, I think, pride ourselves on not doing is allowing um, you, you guys, the town, to be fielding responses or answers or phone calls from people within the firm that you're not necessarily familiar with, in the sense that, so Chris and I are always gonna be, ideally, an email with a question would go to the two Chris's. Um, we would share that with anybody in the firm that we need to we need help from to answer the question. Um, if that's a wetlands issue or a procurement issue, you know, I might turn to either Chris or another person in the firm to help out with that. But we then, you know, digest the information, vet the answer, and then one of us is will give it will give it back to the client. Um, so you're you're not fielding legal advice from people within the firm that you're not familiar with. Now, ideally, um, I'd say that we are small enough that it would be our hope that you guys get to know others in our firm over time. But that is you sort of never forced or rushed or forced upon you, the client, in the sense that you know I can imagine a scenario in which a year into serving as town council um, with an alcohol licensing question, you may well want to go right to Ivria and bypass the two of us entirely, which is at some point generally going to be OK with us. But that's a decision that you guys are making because you've come to you know, learn the other attorneys and trust their expertise as well. Um, but until that, until sort of you, the client, elect to make those, those lines of communication more open, you know, we're the ones who are gonna be responding to the questions that come in from the client. Yeah, and just to build off <coughs> that too, I, I think that the, um, 
you know, we also, you know, as the lead and, and the lead team for you, I mean, we have, we add context to everything, right? I mean, so a, a discrete question about this particular legal issue, there may be something going on over here that we know because we're dealing with you all the time that we can bring to the equation, you know, and I think that's, that's an important thing to have in your town council too, is, is the ability to kind of see the, the 30,000 foot picture of things. We will never have the attorney of the day. On <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, category collaboration and relationship building, um, certainly touched on this a little bit with some of the other questions, but how would you work with other town departments and officials to address legal issues and provide guidance? Well, I mean, I think that it's, um, you know, it, it sort of happens organically as you, as you kind of roll out as a, as a new town council, right? I mean, you, you, we're not trying to look to create business, but, you know, questions invariably start to come up, you know, and you start to get a chance to work with different officials, um, you know, and I think it's, it's important to, um, you know, to really try to put the same face with that official each time you know, whether it's bringing in someone that I know is a specialist on a code enforcement issue, you know, um, or, you know, licensing, we've, we've talked about every, uh, again, but, um, you know, just making sure that uh, we're bringing in the right person, but also being there so that the officials get to know not just the specialist, but obviously building the relationship with your town council, um, you know, and to me, it's, uh, you know, I'm try I try to be early for things. So if I'm at town meeting, it's like going around and introducing myself to people. Um, you know, if I'm at one of your meetings, you know, it's talking to people in the, in the audience, you know, whatever it is, it's just, uh, you know, trying to, like I said, go, I go back to this. It's, this <coughs> is a customer service business, you know, and, and if your customers don't know who you are, um, you know, you don't want to be this kind of, you know, up in the, the ivory tower kind of, role you know I, I view town council as very you know in the trenches you know we want the officials to identify with us I think a lot of us you know again we went through the COVID pandemic and we were all kind of on the same crisis management team you know it, we, every day we had you know public health questions legal questions you know and we all had to work together and I think that those those are the types of experience we could we continue to have so I think that's that's how we approach our our relationship building I, and, and that's and I just say that's the fun part of of you know being a new town council in a new town is getting to know the people uh, who have who, who work here um, and hearing from them um, you know what the issues are and trying to figure out how we can um, help with the immediate problems that are being presented and sort of build a relationship that's gonna that's gonna help both the town and and us over time um, it is it is you know genuinely uh, enjoyable to get to know um, people in a new town, um, hear what hear, hear what you know, hear what they're dealing with, and 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 try to figure out a way to help. I think we're also gonna just two yeah. second ad. I think we're also gonna you know, I assume Paige is our primary point of contact, so we're gonna follow her lead. If she you know, if she says DPW director needs help, you know, run with it then that's what we'll do. If she wants to keep herself in the middle, if she wants to be a gatekeeper of sorts, however she wants to do things is the way, you know, we're going to provide the service. So we want to, every town is different and we can fit into the model with clear direction. We will follow orders. May I have a quick follow up? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so, <laughs> you know, you've got 15 towns, maybe potentially 16, you know, in another couple of weeks. If, if, how do you keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on in the town? Do you watch board of selectmen meeting, select board meetings, uh, even though you might not be on the agenda and might not be on Zoom? Do you read the infamous, uh, famous Foxborough Reporter to stay uh, <laughs> in touch? Uh, just out of curiosity, with the other towns that you, you've, you've been doing? Yeah, been I mean, I think it's, it's definitely tough because local media has really collapsed, I think, in the last 15 years. But... You know, I do try to keep abreast of the, the important news that's happening in, in the communities that I work in. Um, you know, and I do pay attention to the, maybe if it's not watching like a whole meeting, like it's at least paying attention to your agenda. You know, mm -hmm. so if, you know, something's tipping me off there, like, oh, hey, like, 
they have this licensing issue coming up. I wonder if they need our help with something, um, reaching out to the, to the town manager about that. Um, yeah, so we do try to pay attention, I think, in that way. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, there, there's regular follow-up, you know, with us, with our primary point of contact. I mean, I, I, I can't think of a week where I don't talk uh, to every one of my town administrators or town managers. You know, even just to check in to say, hey, everything all, every, everything all right? <laughs> Radio silence this week. What's going on, you know? Yeah. Um, Thank you. We actually schedule meetings, you know, so we'll have standard weekly or biweekly check-in meetings um, just to make sure we're, we're getting that information. And as um, uh, I don't think we did put this in the pro proposal, but uh, one of the things we like to do at no cost to the town is what we call a listening tour. And that's just to help us get our feet wet. But we'd love to go visit your zoning board, your planning board, your board of health, your CONSCOM, and just spend half an hour with them just to understand what they're working on, what they're dealing with, so we're making sure that we're not missing pieces right off the bat. Because we realize it's not going to be, that's not obviously wrapping up everything <laughs> on June 30th, so there's going to be some carryover. Yeah. <laughs> Great question, Doc. Okay, um, ethics and integrity. Do you work with the, well, I think you, we, I think Bill, to hit on this a little bit, but do you work with adjacent communities? And if so, how would you deal with any perceived conflict of interest? I think you, I'm trying to think, who do they Norfolk, mean? I think is what yeah. you We do, we represent Norfolk, mm -hmm. and we represent Wellesley and Needham. Um, and you need to be, you need to, it, it, it takes vigilance and it takes some forethought. Um, so before we applied here, uh, Justin Casanova Davis is the, uh, town manager in Norfolk, and I went to him and I said, um, we would like to apply for Foxborough. We think we'd be a good fit there, but I wasn't gonna do it without his blessing because I want, the, you know, the town needs to understand. <coughs> and he was okay with it. He said there's some dealings with Foxborough, but not a lot, and he thought it would work out. But there will inevitably be times when, um, when we're gonna have a, where, where the two towns are at odds, and in those instances, we remove ourselves from both, you know, we don't pick a town, we can't pick a town, we remove ourselves from both towns, and I think it's our job to make sure we identify that early in the process so that, <clears throat> so that if you do need legal counsel in the situation, you have time to find it so that you can make the best decisions for the town without us slowing you down. As a follow-up to that, do you assist in, in finding, helping to find counsel that each town could have? Yes, we can, yeah. We, we actually have relationships with other firms so, because we're all going to run into conflicts yeah, sometimes. It happens. Yeah, we all have abutting towns, and so we, we, we have, de you know, just like, can you do this for that? I guess that was your follow-up. Yeah, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it just so it's in the record. But you know, can you provide an example uh, of a time when you represented two communities and had to navigate a situation involving potential conflicts of interest? I think you're kind of addressing it, but I don't know if you actually have a, a particular one that you could speak to. You don't have to name the, yeah. the towns, but I mean, I when I was when I worked in Framingham, we also were town council in Sherburne, so I know we had some. Uh, uh, I think some environmental issues happening in one part of Framingham that was going to be impacting Sherburne, you know, and so we, just like Tom said, you know, we, we basically early on in the process for both clients explained, you know, these are the rules of professional responsibility that impact us as your attorney, um, but we're not leaving you high and dry, like here are two firms that can help you, you know, or if you don't like these, like you're welcome to find, you know, whoever, obviously your, your choice, so, um, so that's how we handled it there. All right, um, approach to financial relationships. Uh, what is your opinion on retainer billing versus hourly billing? billing? Um, when do you think one option is better than the other? Um, well, before I talk about that, I did want to make sure that you did see, um, we had an update that we sent yesterday, uh, which, you know, as you know, uh, we met with Bill and Paige uh, a few weeks ago. You know, I think that was one of the things we took uh, important feedback from during that that meeting um, was on our rate structure, you know. And while 
I think everyone agrees that the cost of doing business for everyone is getting more costly. You know, we have, we have attorneys that we have to pay. We have a, you know, office space we have to pay for and such. Um, we got together, we, we, we sharpened our pencils and figured out, you know, how we could make it work. Uh, because as, as Tom has said, and I, I, you know, echo, you know, we would view Foxborough as a very important client. You know, we thought this, it would be a good faith thing for us to do to just um, make that change to our proposal. So um, on retainers, um, which I know are a popular, a popular thing in, the, in, in all uh, private and public, uh, I think in the municipal world, I think where you see is that um, retainers don't always work because you know it's like one side or the other seems to win. You know, it's like you're either um, you know having a year where you have a lot of use of the town council, and um, or a year where you're not using as much, or or month to month. You know, and it's um, it's hard to I think to gauge, as particularly in a community where you've had to, you know one town council for so long, like really how. Um, what the legal service need is, you know, especially if you know if you're combining, uh, if you're bringing labor uh, under one attorney, which I know is not your situation now, um, you know, and there's always litigation. There's large real estate transactions. There's major zoning uh, things that happen, which uh, can make it really hard to approximate those types of things. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's not a way to do a retainer. I just think it's. Uh, it's very, it's very hard to determine, you know, at the outset of a relationship, um, when you're talking about a, a town council. Yeah, and I, I guess I would add to that. Um, if you, we're not saying no to a retainer, but I think Chris hit on hit, hit on the difficulties. Um, if it's a, if it's a budgetary issue, um, we will never put you in a bad position financially, right? So if you tell us hey, you know, we got $10,000 left. We're not gonna, we'll figure out a way to get you the answers you need, the, the service you need, and not exceed your budget, right? We're, we're all part of the same team. I, I hope we don't have that conversation <laughs> every June or every May, but I have that conversation with, um, with, with my town administrators and town managers on a semi-regular basis, you know? How are you doing? Um, tell us, you, you know, tell us, what you got, tell us what you're trying to work through, and we'll make it work. You know, we're, we want to be a team, we want to be partners in this, um, but the re, you know, a retainer, I don't think always builds the best partnership, because what, you know, either, it doesn't feel good to bill you too much, right? I, I've had retainers in the past, and it's like, ooh, I'm getting that much, and I only build that many hours. I, I don't, that doesn't feel good to me. It doesn't feel good to say, wow, I think my effective rate was $50 an hour this month. I'd, you know, I don't want that either. I, 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 you know, kind of, we want to work with you. We want, we want to be paid fairly, and we want to give you good services. And we can get to the end uh, in, in a manner that suits your needs and gets you the services with communication. To me, it's like, you know, communication is everything. If we're talking, there's no problems. It's, it's when we stop talking that that we run into issues. Thank you. Anybody have any follow-up for that? No. No? No. Okay, so I guess, you know, you're here, we're interviewing you, but in turn, uh, you, may be, you, you may be hired to represent us. Is there something that you want to ask us? You know, uh, you know whether it's, um, I mean, you know, you know what we didn't do, which is, you know, maybe if we do it next time, maybe we should do it quickly. Just so, just so you know, I think even with like for town manager, we kind of gave a little bit about ourselves, not anything, but but just like so. Okay, I said I'm Stephanie McGowan. This is, I'm first year chair uh, into my fifth year. Just so maybe you know where where we are here. You know, as far as uh, we the board has switched up a little bit. Mm -hmm. We we did have a big contested race in both our school committee and board of selectmen this year, but but in the past it hasn't been. So some of us have lingered on, but. Yeah, if you just want to like just tell them like what brought you here, where you know how long you've been here, and well, I'm a lifelong resident, actually sixth generation Fox Row, so I'm Ooh, really wow. a townie. Um, I grew up here. My kids are growing up here. My grandkids are growing up here. Um, I taught nursery school and then landed up at the recreation department and 
subsequently became the director and retired after 22 years of the recreation director job, um, and that was just two years ago. So now it's retirement time, and you know maybe payback time. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> and it's time to get involved. And I had wanted to do it the year before, and I didn't do it, and I chose to run this year. Um, it was a great race, and I'm glad to be here. And I think that um, I bring some skill sets to the table that are useful in, in, in various areas of what the, the uh, Board of Selectmen need to do. I'm Bill Yukna, obviously. I'm the, uh, the vice chair. Um, this is my first year as well. Um, I've been in town for 32 years, so I'm not a townie. Um, <laughs> but the... Uh, you know, my kids have been raised here. My grandkids are, are here as well. Um, I've been the chairman of the building committee for the last 23 years. Um, I've been the business manager uh, for the last 12 years. And prior to that, I was in the private sector and private equity um, in a number of the companies that we owned. So um, hopefully I bring something to the board uh, from the, the, the business side of things as well as, as the, obviously the town side, having had as much experience as I've had. Hi, Mark Elfman. Um, I'm in my ninth year, of third term. Mm -hmm. uh, being on the board, um, also like Bill, not a townie, but lived here for 35 years. Uh, married a townie though, like, <laughs> like myself. Did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so semi-close. Uh, small businessman. I'm a chiropractor here in town. Lived in town. Worked in town. Practiced in town for the last 35 years. Um, been. Uh, chair for three of my years on the board, uh, two of those during COVID, so that was interesting, and yeah. one during a town manager search, and that was kind of an interesting <laughs> year also. Uh, but same as Bill, raised my kids here, graduated, both graduated Foxborough High, and uh, uh, love the community, and love giving back, and been a volunteer at one point or another through most of my 35 years also. All right, so we're, we're very close to running out of time, but is there anything in particular other that you want to know from us? I mean, I, I just, you asked us like what we thought, you know, were, were you know, the most uh, pressing issues that are facing, I forget if it was the state or the town, but what, what, do, what in your perspective, you know, your town council is going to be starting July 1st. Um, what do you see as the most important issues that your town council is working on in the next year? Well, first of all, obviously the MBTA, <laughs> right? Yeah. right, right you know, because, yeah, because most recently uh, we do have um, contracts coming up soon, so that that will that will be, uh, you know, a, a big deal. Um, and um, although uh, Paige is doing a good job, um, she is a new town manager. This is her first t town manager job. So, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I want to speak for her, but obviously a lot of things that will be coming up will be new for her. She'll, she'll, she'll need, you know, good guidance. So for us to somebody that can, you know, hit it with her, make sure, you know, she's comfortable with what's going on. So for me, I think those would be the top things. Anybody have anything else you think that's important? Uh, no, I think MBTA obviously was the number one, you know, housing is a big issue, um, uh, and the immigration issue. So keeping, you know, yeah. sounds like you guys got your finger on the pulse of what's going on with that, yeah. too. Do you have anything in particular? I don't. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much Thank for you. your interest. You know, just so you know, I don't know if you know our time frame, but obviously we're seeing two other firms today, and we will be at, a week from today. Next Tuesday night, we'll be deliberating at at our, our meeting, and and all hopefully we'll be picking picking our next town council so i'm sure you guys will just want to watch that meeting see what's going on oh we will yeah, yeah. And obviously if there's any yeah. questions we can answer in the interim you know about Absolute, our absolutely. update you know anything else yep. that you've heard or see in our proposal yep. please reach out to us yeah thank happy. you for saying that because i was yeah. thinking that just in case something yeah. came up with another of firm course. that we, we would always give you the you know to circle back around if there was right. something we, we didn't get to hit with you guys for sure thank you thank you so much thank you so much, much. Thank you so much. Thank you much. meeting you all good luck thank you.